Hey guys, it's Madison, and finally it is time for the quarter two progress report for 2024. If you're wondering why I'm just now getting around to the quarter two progress update in August and where I've been for the past month and a half, I just kind of had a busy period at school and then a kind of period of demotivation from making videos and so I just really haven't really felt like making videos for the past month and a half but finally I am back here to report on how quarter two went this year. So jumping right in starting with April here is the overall time that I spent on languages throughout the month of April. For the first week of April my friend Krista was still in town and so all those tall blue spikes were us watching variety show episodes or drama episodes together. The last few days she was here we were kind of binge watched Kill Me Kill Me together and so that is that. In the next week or two after she left you can see there's not much there. A little bit of binge watching some Chinese shows but after that just basically nothing for a week or so because I was just decompressing from the super fun but really busy time that we had together. And then after that it looks like I settled into a more kind of active study focused regular everyday kind of study routine which you can really see if you remove all the passive stuff and only look at the active time which is here where at the beginning of the month there was almost nothing just um, a few minutes of speaking here and there as Chris and I were going around Korea doing the fun things we were doing and then nothing else until the second half of the month where I was focused I think mostly on reading so a lot of do Chinese reading and then Korean reading as well. And then interestingly even though the amount of time I spent overall on languages throughout the month versus just active time is pretty different 51 hours versus just 14 and a half the language breakdown looks very very similar I'll show you here is the language breakdown for the overall time so you can see a little over half Korean and then mostly Mandarin after that. And then here is the chart for the after time, again almost identical percentage for Korean. And then second place again strongly Mandarin. So yeah that was my April, the first half very much focused on finishing up and then recovering from that very exhausting but fun trip or vacation with my friend. And then finishing up for the second half of the month pretty strong actually with basically daily studying, daily reading in my languages. So pretty happy with how April went all things considered. Now moving on to May. So this morning I was kind of moving all of my data from my notebook into the Google Sheets to kind of see how the charts will play out and I was really surprised I may because I don't recall May being this way but graphs wise it's a really interesting month. So the spring semester for the school that I teach at ends in kind of early-ish June and so May always ends up being a very very busy month you know trying to cram everything in that we need to get in before finals and so I think I was just really kind of exhausted throughout the month of May which is going to give some context for the data that I'm about to show but I'm going to start out with the ACT study this time just the active time spent and that is this graph here. As you can see it's just seven days in the middle of the month and that is actually the 40 hour seven day language challenge that I did in May. And so literally outside of that challenge I did no other active studying the entire month of May apparently which is surprising but that's what the data says and so apparently I was just super not motivated to actively study languages that month. However if you look at the overall time spent it's a very different story. So as you can see I was very binge watch happy this month. I think I was just in the mood to watch a lot of shows apparently, a lot of Mandarin shows as you can see. Because I was watching so many shows this month my total for the month is very high. It's literally over double what April's totals were and so the overall time is 122 hours. Wow and obviously most of that is Mandarin because of all the shows I was watching in Mandarin. Whereas for the active time it was just a measly 20 hours and 58 minutes so almost 21 hours which actually is more than April's number so overall not bad for the month but considering it was only during the course of one week I feel like I probably could have studied a bit more throughout the rest of the month but again I recall May being a pretty kind of mentally tiring time and so I don't really blame myself for focusing on just the easy task of turning on a show in the evening and just letting it play for several hours compared to actually using my brain in a much more active fashion. So I don't really blame myself um, although I do you know kind of wish I had studied a bit more throughout the month. So that is the month of May. Moving on to June I'm gonna go ahead and put the overall time for the month up now. As you can see not nearly as binge watchy as the previous month was thankfully. Although there are two binge days that do kind of skew the rest of the data down unfortunately but yeah I was pretty happy with how June went. This is the month that I was trying to read Korean every single day or close to every single day. That was my rough goal for the month. Looking at the chart for just the active time for the month you can see that I didn't actually do Korean every single day that month although I am still pretty happy with what I did manage to accomplish. That one little red bar there is when I was exploring Mandarin Bean the website and other than that all of that is Korean reading time. Looking at the language breakdown for the month you can see that it's mostly Korean because of all that reading plus the last day of the month I binged watched the drama Lovely Runner and so that led to that being a high percentage and the rest of it is from all those Mandarin shows. You can see no Japanese 
Japanese at all this month, unfortunately. And just the active language breakdown, you can see it's almost entirely Korean again because I was very focused on trying to read every day or close to every day in Korean and that shows in the numbers there. And even though I wasn't necessarily successful in actually reading every day in Korean, I am still very happy with the actual number of hours I spent reading that month. And because I had that daily active goal for Korean throughout this month, that is what led to, I believe, June being the highest month out of quarter two in terms of active language study time. Moving on to the quarterly graph. So here is a daily graph for just the active time spent in quarter two. As you can see, as far as the active studying is concerned, Korean was by far the biggest priority this quarter with a little bit of Mandarin here and there and then hardly any Japanese at all, honestly, throughout the quarter. It's also fairly episodic in nature, where as you can see, the end of April, I was pretty consistent for a few weeks. The middle of May, I had that 40 hours of Indian language challenge. And then throughout June, I was kind of decently consistent with some kind of chunks missing in the middle there, but definitely a lot more empty space in quarter two compared to quarter one, as far as active studying goes. But once again, the very beginning of April, my friend was still visiting. And then May, I was very kind of mentally exhausted because of school. And so I don't really blame myself too much for that that hopefully quarter three can be a little more consistent in terms of active studying, we shall see. And as was probably obvious from the chart, if you look at the language breakdown, Korean is by far the front runner in terms of time spent on each language. And Japanese almost disappeared entirely from the graph. If you look at the comparison of quarter one to quarter two, that lack of yellow in the chart is one of the most noticeable things to me. I don't really mind Korean being the strongest language on there, but having Japanese disappear entirely is not really my goal either. So hopefully next quarter I can do a bit more Japanese to keep it kind of on the mind and not lose those skills that I have there. So we shall see. But I am overall happy with um, how the quarter went in terms of my Korean reading practice and how much time I spent on that. So overall, I am pretty happy with the active studying time that I did get for that. And comparing the active time breakdown to the overall time breakdown, you can see the biggest difference is honestly just the amount of binge watching, especially Mandarin shows. So a lot more red bars popping up. And I think I was also watching shows more consistently throughout the quarter compared to last quarter. I'm not really totally, totally sure. It just kind of seems like that glancing at both charts back to back. But yeah, not much to say about that beyond I was watching a lot of Mandarin shows this quarter, which is also reflected in the language breakdown. Whereas for the active time, Korean was dominating by far. For the overall time, it's basically a 50-50 split between Mandarin and Korean. And once again, when you compare quarter one to quarter two, it's a bit sad how much Japanese disappeared. I do want to kind of pick that up for quarter three and hopefully get a bit more Japanese practice or exposure in there from time to time. Next, very quickly, a new metric that I'm doing this year, which is a year in weeks, which is just kind of a fun, interesting way to look at data in a different way than just day by day. Here is the year in weeks so far. The first 13 weeks were quarter one and then 14 through 26 are quarter two. And so as you can see in quarter two, it definitely overall was more time spent on languages. And then looking at the year in weeks for just the active time, you can see that, like I mentioned, Japanese basically disappears from my active regimen. In quarter one, I was trying to do it fairly consistently. And then quarter two, it's just like barely not even there, honestly. And even though both quarter one and quarter two aren't really necessarily the picture of consistency, it's kind of ups and downs throughout the entire year. Quarter two feels even more kind of sporadic than quarter one was. Although the overall numbers for study time for quarter two were higher than quarter one, once again, for active time as well. So yeah, not a lot to learn from these graphs necessarily, but I think just kind of an interesting way to look at the year in a different way. So that is that. And then finally, last but not least, the year so far daily view. I think this is always the most fun graph to look at, honestly. But yeah, looking at this view, especially you can really see that quarter two is kind of like an amped up, skewed up version of quarter one. Still pretty sporadic, but the binge sessions are longer. The regular consistent days are also a bit higher as well. Everything is kind of um, tilted upward a bit more. So kind of interesting to look at that there. With the language breakdown being first place Mandarin, just barely over Korean, and then Japanese a distant third. Looking at the year so far for active studying, definitely, like I said, more sporadic in quarter two. But again, everything's kind of skewed upwards a bit more with generally more time spent on average on the days that I did do stuff actively. So again, just a really interesting way to look at the year so far with the language breakdown being obviously Korean in first place with Mandarin and Japanese being a very distant second and third place. I'm actually kind of surprised at how close they are to each other. I guess I've just forgotten how much Japanese study I must have done in the first quarter of the year because, wow, that's actually pretty high for Japanese. And yeah, that wraps up this quarter two progress report. Make sure you let me know down below how you're doing in your language learning or how quarter two went for you specifically, if you can recall that far back in the past. But yeah, that is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. And until then, annyeong.